going on. They were screaming F you fascist if it was hard to understand with the bleeps and stuff. I get it. Students at the University of North Texas in Denton, pasty white kids from Texas, shouting down a group of young conservatives, among them Jeff, Jeff Younger, who is running for a house seat in Texas. The students were, quote, protesting Younger because he opposed the gender transition of his young son. And there's a whole story to this. And it's quite compelling stuff. And Jeff Younger joins us now. Also joining us is Kelly Nider, a student at the University of North Texas, Denton. Kelly and Jeff, I want to thank you both uh, for, for joining us tonight. Jeff, I want to start with you. Um, tell us a story as to why you were there uh, to give this talk and, and just how it exploded into this. Well, the Young Conservatives of Texas uh, at, at uh, UNT asked me to come and talk about my vision for Texas since I'm running for office. And in particular, they wanted to hear about how what's happened to my son and my fight to protect him in a Texas court and in the legislature related to some of the problems that I want to fix in Texas. And uh, that's what I came to talk about. Didn't get the chance to do that. Didn't get a chance to do that. Tell us about the, the, the fight over your son, because uh, the details of that uh, are, are really something. Well, uh, you know, my wife divorced me uh, when my son was three years old in order to transition to a girl. And that's led to, uh, you know, a seven year court fight now uh, for me to stop her from chemically castrating him. The medical records show that, that she wanted to do that around eight years old. My son is now nine. Um, I've, I uh, was uh, in court uh, uh, and, and won a, essentially won a case in front of a jury. I got 50 50 custody, no child support. And I, I got all the conservator rights, but then they recused my judge, put me in the most leftist courtroom in Dallas County, and they have never implemented that order. And in fact, uh, gave me a gag order, which was specifically intended to prevent me from running for office in the state of Texas, a totally illegal gag order. I refused to follow the gag order and I challenged the judge to throw me in jail so I could challenge it on habeas corpus grounds. The judge refused to do that and instead the judge took my children away from me, saying that I hadn't followed the court order and the gag order. And your wife, your ex-wife, was trying to transition your son and chemically castrate your son since age what? Three. Three age years three. old. That's right. Is, is there any indication? What would this little boy say if, if, if we asked him? I mean, well, is she, there, she testified in court at our trial in 2019 that what caused her to believe he was a girl was that he chose a girl's toy in a McDonald's Happy Meal, and he he wanted a silver purse with a unicorn on it when they went through it through a, a Target. Um, however, my son is consistently never presented as a girl to me. He only presents as a girl with his mother. So the court had two choices: he could have a normal life with me or he could have a transgender life with his mother. And the court has consistently mm -hmm. chosen to push my son towards a transgender identity. It really came to a head in July when my son visited the court appointed counselor and four times told the court appointed counselor that he wants to be a boy and he wants to go to school as a boy because he's getting embarrassed by all this at school. And uh, she immediately uh, pushed him out of the office and called CPS on me and initiated the seventh CPS investigation that I've endured just for wanting to raise my son as a boy. That's, that's it's amazing. And, and on that basis, told the court to take my kids from me. Good God. I mean, that is, that is, that's just an unbelievable story. That's a horrifying story. I, I do want to bring in Kelly just for a second. Um, uh, you both uh, were in a pretty nasty situation when you guys tried to leave the building, as would be expected when you have these psychos uh, surrounding you. you. You took some video. Let's take a look at that. Kelly, what was it like going through that? Tell, tell us your experience that night. Oh, my gosh. Um, I was expecting, you know, a lot of protesters at the event. I faced that before. Um, uh, most of the students just know who I am by now because I've been, you know, doing these conservative events on my campus for so long. 
So I was expecting some backlash, some protesters, and there was a safety plan in place. Um, if the police felt that it was too dangerous, um, me and Jeff were to be evacuated. And obviously right. it got to that point. So the scariest part was getting separated from Jeff and our police escort. Um, after that, I mean, we were just like all hell broke loose. I was kind of pushed into a building with two officers and I ended up hiding in a janitor's closet in this building oh, while Antifa ran up and down the hallways, you know, trying to open the door, screaming. At one point we had the lights off in the closet and they were right outside. Again, they didn't know we were in there, but you know, they were shaking the handle and just kind of on a witch hunt to find me. So it was, it was terrifying. It I was terrifying for a moment there. I honestly, like, I felt like I might not make it out at that point. It's unbelievable to see that video. I mean, the, the anger. Um, Jeff, before we go, I got 10 seconds left. I, you know, when, when I see kids like that, I honestly just feel bad because I just, I, I think I, you can see how disillusioned these, I, I mean, I, I don't even know what to think about what you guys went through, but do you just feel pity for, for kids that, that have that level of anger and just disillusionment at that young age? You know, about halfway through, I kind of realized what was happening. I started yeah. going after the professors in the audience, telling them how they had miseducated these children Absolutely. to think that this was normal behavior, violating our American social norms. And some of these are sacred social norms about respect, decorum, and free speech. And That's further, awesome. you know, I think that uh, we're, we're facing a crisis of fatherlessness in this country, yeah. as we know. I and I really looked out there and saw fatherless children who really had no guidance right. when they were young. And they've been, they've been completely indoctrinated by a by some very sick people in our society. Kelly yeah. and Jeff, I'm glad you guys got out of there. I really appreciate you guys coming on to tell us that story. Uh, it, it's an amazing story. And I wish the best of luck to both of you guys. Thank you. Thank you.